you're a little slow, aren't you? I've talked a lot about weapons that tanks might use in the future, but I haven't talked about what kind of armor advancements we'll see them use, and for good reason. Armor technology generally progresses slower than firepower technology, and militaries are more likely to keep their armor advancements a secret. If the enemy knows how your new armor works, it'll be a lot easier for them to formulate a counter. Despite how secretive it all is, there are a few interesting armor solutions that I can talk about, and I can still talk about how the use of armor will likely change in the future. When talking about armor, there are two main categories that armor tech falls into, passive armor and dynamic or reactive armor. Passive armor refers to regular old steel armor as well as composite armor. Both of these are inert, and don't require any sensors for them to do their job, so it shouldn't be hard to see why they're called passive. Dynamic or reactive armor, on the other hand, refers to a wider variety of tech. Explosive reactive armor, soft kill active protection systems, and hard kill active protection systems are all considered reactive armor. When it comes to improving passive armor, there's two options. Either increase the thickness of the plate or the composite, or improve the materials involved. Most composites use ceramics and steel mixed with denser materials like tungsten or depleted uranium. Graphene has been proposed as a possible filler for future composite, but I don't think that's very likely to happen. Graphene, while tough and very light, is difficult to mass produce, so it doesn't make for a good filler. One material that does look fairly promising, however, is metal foam. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Metal foam is metal that has been interlaced with pores that can contain either air or a different type of metal. Metal foam makes for an ideal filler since it is both lighter and stronger than rolled homogenous armor. Metal foam can absorb around three times the energy that regular steel can, while just being a fraction of the weight, and that's in an unoptimized state. With proper research and manufacturing, metal foam could become even more effective. Granted, this performance is with kinetic projectiles. I don't know how effective metal foam is at stopping shape charges. Metal foam's effectiveness can be traced to its ability to deform. This deformation allows the foam to absorb the compression waves generated by a kinetic impact. I also suspect that the foam's unique shape helps to deform the projectile itself, decreasing its penetrative capability, sort of like perforated steel armor. The name is pretty self-explanatory, but for people unfamiliar with the English language, perforated steel armor is basically a steel plate that has a bunch of holes punched into it. The principle behind it is that, as the projectile strikes one of the holes, it's going to yaw and deform as it passes through, making the round much less effective at penetrating. I don't know if that applies to metal foam, that's just my theory, so take it with a pinch of salt. Due to its attractive characteristics, metal foam could likely be used all around the tank, but would be most heavily used on the front of the turret in the hull. Manufacturing metal foam is obviously a bit more difficult than manufacturing rolled homogenous armor, but it's a whole lot easier than producing something like graphene, so the added cost and complexity might be worth it. When it comes to improving reactive protection, there is one very interesting technology that has seen some experimentation, and could complement metal foam very well. It even sounds futuristic, so I'm sure you sci-fi fans will love the concept. It's called electromagnetic armor, and it would be used to defeat shape charge warheads. The concept is fairly simple. The hole would consist of two plates separated by insulating material. One plate is grounded while the other is not. When a shape charge jet penetrates the armor, it creates a circuit between the two plates, disrupting the jet. Electromagnetic armor could be extremely useful, as it doesn't technically require sensors to perform its function, and could theoretically be fairly lightweight much like explosive reactive armor. It also eliminates the inherent risk in using explosive reactive armor, which is the potential to harm infantry that are close by when the ERA is set off. It could be argued that the infantry are in danger regardless through the exploding shaped charge, but it never hurts to minimize risk. While it doesn't technically require sensors, it would be most efficient to use them with EM armor. Keeping the armor on at all times would obviously use up a ton of electricity, so it would be most efficient to use a sensor that detects incoming projectiles. and activates the armor at that point, it's sort of a give-and-take situation. You can either waste electricity, or you can have increased unit cost and complexity. Speaking of electricity, the main problem with EM armor is the need for a small and robust power supply. Tardek came up with one and slapped it into Bradley with EM armor, with the test being an overall success. The Bradley isn't exactly a tank, though. It has a decent amount of spare room thanks to its troop compartment. My source concludes that producing a small enough power supply should be possible in the near future, but I don't know the exact date that this report was created. All I know is that the power supply was tested around 2005 to 2007. EM armor's heaviest use would be on the roofs of tank holes and turrets, where it would help protect against top attack ATGMs. Active protection systems already do that today, but if for some reason the APS fails or is disabled, you're pretty much hosed. You can't put enough armor on roofs to protect them passively, so EM armor would be extremely useful in that regard. Tank armor is all about layered defense. There isn't one magic technology that will do everything at once. Here's how I personally see tank armor being used in the future. I think that, in order to save on weight and to maximize the amount of armor that can be used for a given weight, that unmanned turrets will become more commonplace. 
and that the crew will be positioned together down in the hull, like on the M1 tank test bed, or the T14 armada. If no one is in the turret, you can make it smaller and also give it less armor, saving on weight. This does reduce the commander's eyeball visibility, so it comes at a cost. Metal foam would most likely be used in the front armor arrays and on the front sides of the hull, allowing the tank to resist kinetic weapons at wider angles. These armor arrays would also contain ceramic and silicus materials to help defeat shape charges. Electromagnetic armor would be used on the whole sides and the whole roof. Two active protection systems would be used, one soft kill and one hard kill, allowing the armor to be activated once the hard kill system detects an incoming warhead. Again, this is all speculation on my part. Anyway, that's about all I have to say on the subject. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.